I need about one minute to let it out. <laughs> Hallelujah! Woo! Glory to your name, Lord Jesus! <sighs> I thought I was gonna explode. <sighs> the praise in this place. that our loving Father, he's so good to us. We don't deserve it, yet here he shows up with his presence and he warms our hearts. And for that, I just shout glory to his name. If I could sit down with a cup of coffee, share with you, hear you, and fellowship 101. We'd spend our time rejoicing over all the good things that God has done in our lives. Good morning to each of you. I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am your sister. You are my brothers and sisters in Christ. And here we are in the house of prayer with this opportunity to worship. Our text today is Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. This week I am reading from the New Revised Standard version. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Verse 2. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Father God, in the name of Jesus, please speak to your people. Use my voice, Lord. Touch their hearts as only you can do it with your word. May we be hearers of your voice and give us hearts to obey. Thank you for your presence. We thank you for this holy hour of worship. It is in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, by faith we pray. Amen. As I prepared for worship, in deep meditation and prayer and research through uh, all the commentaries, I was up to about eight commentaries in different material that kept coming to me to review in preparation for today the consecrated life. What is God saying to us in 2023 through his word? A song, the lyrics of a song, kept coming to my mind. I couldn't shake them. So I must share them with you. Memories, light, the corners of my mind. Misty watercolor memories of the way we were. Scattered pictures of the smiles we left behind. Smiles we gave to one another for the way we were. Can it be that it was all so simple then? Or has time rewritten 
every line. If we have the chance to do it all again, tell me, would we? Could we? Memories may be beautiful and yet what's too painful to remember we simply choose to forget. So it's the laughter we will remember whenever we remember the way we were. The lyrics to this song stands out as I study this text. This song comes to mind as I consider the apostle's letter written to the church gathered in Rome. This song says that it's a choice to forget the painful memories and hold on to the laughter. It even reflects that the memories become like watercolor. But the truth of the matter is, there's always been trouble in life. I had a grandfather that was a Tuskegee Airman uh, during one of the wars, World War II. I had uh, family members that served in Vietnam, cousins that went in service to Iraq. And what that tells me is that problems and trouble has all, what, the church of Rome had burned down the temple, the Romans. This life has always had trouble. The same God that kept his people back then is the God that we're depending on right now. And it's God that we'll turn to for tomorrow. Memories can hold us bondage to the way things were and not allow us to accept that God has said, behold, I make all things new. What is God doing in our lives now? This living presence, this divine. We must change our thinking, change our attitudes so that we can hear, be available for what God is doing. And here's the big idea today. With correct thinking, you can carry out the desires and choices that please God. Yes, you can. Correct thinking. Some call it righteous thinking. Right attitudes in certain scripture. Right thought process are the things that are necessary for correct Christian behavior. That's what this message is all about. Fixing our thinking and our attitudes so that our behavior reflects who we serve. The first thing we must do is offer ourselves to God. The words that the apostle uses in his letter sent to present your bodies as living sacrifice would not have been foreign to the audience he was writing to. Some theologian says that Roman, say that Roman is the uh, foundational study point, starting point for any new believer. That it is the Magna Carta of the Christian faith. Other theologians say it was just a letter. Just like you writing a letter to someone, 
there are certain things that you already know between the sender and the receiver. The things that you highlight in that letter are perhaps the focal point of what you would try to communicate. We understand that the apostle is writing to a group of people that is unaware of how this Christian faith, this Christian walk is carried out. There have been some troublers that have attempted to make the church believe you Gentiles, before you can truly be saved, you have to do it this way. And before he gets there, the apostle is addressing those, He's letting them know it's by faith and faith alone. It's the grace of God that saves. Nothing you have done, nothing you have warrants that salvation. It is a gift. The audience understood sacrifice. The pagan gods that they served required animal sacrifice, sacrifice of their possession, sacrifice of their goods. The terminology, this cult language that the apostle is using is clear to those receiving it. However, it's not animal sacrifices that God wants. It's not your possessions that appease him. You can't pay your way. It's your whole being. And this is a process to understand. It's all of me that God wants. All that I have, all that I am, I'm a living, you are a living sacrifice. This text speaks to the church today. Our temple service is wonderful. Our charitable acts are great. But our Lord requires all of us, our minds, our hearts, our souls, our beings, and yes, our actions. We offer all of ourselves to God. And when we fix our thinking with correct thinking, we can make choices that please God. Some attribute this as the true form of worship. Truly worshiping God is in everything you do. When I cook dinner for my family, when I work with those children that I work with at the juvenile facility, when I serve before the ladies at the job corps. Everything that I do is a representation of who I belong to. All of me belongs to God. And it takes this form of thinking to behave in a way that pleases God. That's what the apostle says. I appeal to you. This is an urgency to present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. This is true worship. The next thing we learn from this text is not to follow the pattern of the world. In verse Two, it says, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Trusting the theology, the truth that God is a good God. Trusting the truth that the plans that God has for your life are good. Plans to bless you. 
even if it doesn't look like what we anticipate or expect, God can be trusted. We don't have to be in bondage to yesterday. We can be freed from the way things were and accept God is doing a new thing in my life. I had the fortune to visit with a dear loved one this week as she reminisces over the past 20 years of being a widow. As I sat with my elder and listened, uh, after 45 years of marriage, before her husband went to that great banquet with our Savior, the past 20 years, she began to share and talk, and I listened. And at the end, I commended her for the choice, the example of now recognizing that it was no longer beneficial to live away from her children. It was no longer beneficial to remain alone. And as we said and reviewed the new the conversation became filled with laughter. I looked over the document and I said, but there's horse races. There's Mardi Gras. There's happy hour. There are socials, there's fellowships, there are dances. Who knows, they're cute guys. What is God doing now? What is the beauty? Is my God trustworthy with today? Are you saying, little darling, that we should forget about those memories? No. We were thankful. We're thankful. And we can be thankful for what he's doing next. We don't have to be in bondage to the way things were. We can be free to know our God is trustworthy. We can make choices. We can make decisions that reflect a faithful, trustworthy God. There's a joy and there's a laughter when we free ourselves. Lord, what do you have for me? Wherever I am, whatever changes that are going on, whatever's happening around me, the God I serve can be trusted. And he makes all things new. I am grateful for my paternal grandmother, 104 years old, at 85 years old, said those words to me. I'm going to go see what God has new for me. What a testimony of faith that I don't have to hold on to what was. God was with me then. I know God is here with me today. But I believe God's love is ever present for tomorrow. And that gives me the faith and strength to go see what's new. My third and final point, do what is good, what's acceptable, and what's perfect. Do what God's will is, discover it, and then practice it. Our faith should lead us to do what God wants. This is our gift, our worship for the great sacrifice that Jesus made for our lives. Salvation came at the cost of our Savior dying on a cross. 
It was his actions that brings us into this Christian family. And for that sacrifice, we offer ourselves. I discovered something. I started a new weight loss plan. It fascinates me that this plan isn't about what foods you gotta give up, what hours you gotta eat between. Obviously, I've been on different plans. How many hours you need to spend in mobile activity. All of those are wonderful. But this plan, I marveled, starts with change the way you think. If you'll change the way you think, you can change the way you're behaving. I said, that's what God is saying to us. If I change my thinking, then I can change my Christian behavior. And just like weight loss should show up without me saying a word, show, so should the actions of the children of God. The way you behave shows the way we're thinking. This text says, do what's good, what's acceptable and what's perfect, for this pleases the Lord. May we bow. Father, these are your people. I pray that they have heard your voice, your word, your encouragement that our thoughts would reflect the truth of your gospel that we would release those thoughts that don't honor you, that we would seek your perfect will with all of our being and that our behavior, our choices would reflect that thinking. It is in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that I pray, amen.